Um, how was the place, by the way? Good. A great quiz. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So we'll just uh, quickly go over quiz one and we'll finish up chapter four, hopefully, today. Uh, and then please do the homework by next Friday because that's probably very related to your exam. Um, and then I'll try to um, upload all the quiz solutions, homework solutions by just before your exam, hopefully during the weekends. I mean, the following weekend. Right. Um, so do you see a screen here? Great. So when the question number one, when Ralph applies, if the mole fraction of A in vapor is 0.3, the mole fraction of B in vapor is 0.7 in binary system. Yeah, that is true because it's binary system. Here, 0.3 is basically Y, A. And then this one is Y, B. So Y, A plus Y, B is one. So it is true. And yeah, I don't know why it just says question one again. Um, oh yeah, because it's all 12 false questions and it's part A, B, and C. Yeah, so these are all two or four questions. So part B, binary liquid mixtures boil over a range of temperatures. So that means, yes, mixtures, and it didn't specify um, mole fraction of one thing. So implying that it can have many different ratio, many different mole fractions of mixtures. So yeah, it can boil over a range of temperatures and you can think of this type of key X, Y diagram. Um, yeah, like I mentioned, this the saturated vapor, sorry, saturated liquid line, that's the boiling point basically at different mole fractions. So the answer is true. C, for regular binary mixtures, except azeotropic system, when YA is greater than XA, I'm sorry, X, YA is greater than XA, except for the pure component. Yeah, so that is true because, um, yeah, regular binary system, yeah, YA is greater than XA. So you can see this is a regular binary system. And um, XA is always below the YA lines, meaning at the same temperature, XA is always lower than YA. So YA is always higher than XA, except these two points. So the answer is true. Yeah, so these all questions are asking you how you can read this TXY diagram. Any questions so far? So that TXY diagram is for n-pentene and n-heptane, and that's showing the mole fraction of heptane, right? Or which one is it? Uh, always light key. Oh, it's always the light key. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. So in this case, it's pentane. All right. Um, okay. So if there's no other questions on big question one, we can move on to the next question. The above TX diagram plot for pentane and heptane mixtures at 1.5 atm, what is the bubble point when x equals 0.5? So basically you can write to this and then read it for 340. Hopefully you got that answer. Any questions? 
right? Yeah, okay, good. And then question two, what is the y value at x equals 0.3 when the liquid mixture is saturated? So we are supposed to read the saturated liquid line at 0.3 and then read the y value. It is around 0.66 or 0.67, that's fine. So that's the answer. Next question, consider speed mixture F of the overall composition is 0.5. When 60 more percent is vaporized through a flash drum, what is the slope of the Q line on YX phase equilibrium diagram of N pentane and N heptane at 1.5 atm? Right, so this one is asking the Q line slope, right? And then the vaporization is 0.6. So you can basically put um, that Q line equation. Oh, yeah, I didn't. Okay, we can pull up the Q line equation quickly right here in case you forgot. Where is it? Um, yeah, right here. No. Oh. Yeah, right here, um, I can make it zoom in. Yeah, this is the Q line equation and the slope is the fractional vaporization, the so 0.6 minus one over 0.6. So negative 0.4 over 0.6. So negative two over three, which is negative 0.667. And I gave a huge margin. So hopefully that covers uh, most of the answer. Any questions on the quiz today? Okay, if there's no questions. Yeah, we'll move on to the example question. Hopefully you have it, the problem too, that I gave you on Wednesday, the handout questions. So let's continue that today. And unfortunately, I don't, I didn't bring the Surface Pro, so I cannot really um, write down during the lecture, but I'll share my previous, you know, hand notes there. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll go over slowly. Don't worry. And also, I share, share I'll share this um, in a clean version later for your review for exam. Problem two: A flash drum operating with one thousand kilomoles per hour speed containing 60 more percent benzene and the remaining toluene at one ATM. All right, so this is a binary system, right? With 50 more percent of the total feed as vapor. All right, so the vaporization is given, which is psi value, psi is 0.5, and the remaining liquid. The so vapor pressures of the two components are given by the following equations. Um, yeah, so this N20 equation, log 10 P saturated vapor is A minus B over the temperature T plus C where PV is in millimeter of Hg, yes, millimeter Hg, and T is in degree C Celsius, um, and there's a conversion factor for millimeter Hg, mercury, 
The boiling point of pure benzene is 80.1 degrees C, and that for towing is 110.6 degrees C. All right, so boiling point, so I guess this is at one ATM, right? That is given here at one ATM. Note, you could have derived the boiling point in full from the internal equation of the state, yeah, in equation of state given above, right? So you can basically figure out the boiling temperature um, with the saturated vapor pressure, but it's given, so you can just relax and use it. <laughs> um, a, B, and C values at one ATM, uh, sorry, a one A, B, C at, um, okay, temperature we should figure out. Okay, that temperature, um, oh, no, 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 sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. So A, B, and C, those are the values um, that we can use in a certain temperature range, right? It's not, these values are not um, different um, at different temperatures. Uh, if the temperature is out of the range, then yeah, you probably need to have a different set of A, B, and C values. But yeah, within a certain range of temperature, you can keep using these A, B, and C values. So that's fine. And also uh, you can recall, uh, probably you, you can recall from the table, hmm, wait a second, I'll go just back here here and then I'll share you how that looks like. Assignment. Um, yeah, assignment here. Table B4 from your materials and energy balance textbook. Here you can see A, B, and C values are within a certain temperature range. So if the temperature range is reasonable. Um, if the temperature range is the one that probably you're looking for, then you can feel free to use these ABC values. Okay. Sometimes there could be a different sets of ABC values, for example, chlorobenzene. Depending on the temperatures, there are different ABC values. You can see. Um, yeah, and now the chloroform, depending on the temperature range, there are two different sets. Yeah, so you, you carefully look at the temperature range and then choose the ABC values. Okay. So these, yeah, if you want to check the temperature range, we can go back to the table, benzene, and then check temperature from 14.5 to 80.9, we can use this temperature. I mean, sorry, values, that's good. So right before, below the boiling temperature and total in. here, the temperature range from 35.3 to 111.5. Yeah, it's a wide range, and we can use this ABC values. Yeah. So then the question is what is the operating temperature of this flesh drum? Yes. So here's a question What is this question is asking, basically? And then how, how can we solve it? So I'll give you maybe one minute to think about how we can approach this question and how we can solve it.
All right. Now, do you have a better idea? Is there anyone who wants to go over the idea how we can approach this question? Um, we have the pi equation. So then, mm -hmm. you know, that has to equal to zero and then you can get the K values at different temperatures based on the Antoine equation. Oh and yeah. Kind of do trial and error like we were doing, but with that instead. Yeah, that's right. Thank you so much. Yes. So thank you. Right. So we would satisfy this function of psi equals zero, right? At the uh, different k values, right? Um, that's correct. And then the psi is given. That's very nice, right? Usually it's vice versa. We need to find either psi at, at fixed temperature or we um, need to get temperature with the fixed psi, right? And this time we are given the psi value. So we can put 0.5 and Z values are given. Here it's 0.6 for benzene and then the remaining 0.4 for toluene. So those are given. Now, what are unknowns are K values. And K values are function of temperature, right? So yeah, that's, um. so here there's a process um, that we can follow. And then here, assume temperature. So we assume temperature. And how do we assume the temperature? Um, coming back here, but it's 0.5. So some liquid and some vapor. Um, so benzene, boiling temperature is 80. Toluene, boiling temperature is 110. If the temperature, now you can think of the TXY diagram a typical TXY diagram, benzene is lighter key, light key. Toluene is heavy key. So at, at X equals zero, right? Then it's 80 degrees C, right? And X equals one, the temperature is 110. So in the TXY diagram, Right, so that's what happens. Therefore, um, at 0.5, at psi equals 0.5. So that means in the TXY diagram, it's in the middle. Therefore, the temperature also should be in the middle. So the first guess is, you can choose either like 95, right? Right in the middle, or you can guess 100 or 90 to get information, function of psi values. So I already ca calculated F psi values based on the K values. K values you get from saturated vapor pressure. Uh, we already learned last time, K value is saturated vapor pressure of one component over total pressure. Saturated vapor pressure of one component can be obtained using Antoine equation. So those are the values after you plug in A, B, C in the Antoine equation. The saturated vapor pressure benzene at 100 degrees C, saturated vapor pressure for toluene at 100 degrees C would be 556.32. And you plug these values in to this equation, K value, and this ben benzene value goes here, saturated vapor pressure, over the total pressure, P. Total pressure is one ATM, 
which is 760 millimeter mercury. And the K value is calculated as below. So using these values, you can now plug all these values into this function of psi to see if that's close to zero. And that is negative 0.21196. Right, so this is less than zero. Less than zero means um, temperature is too high usually because K value, you subtract more K values here. That means, that means you need to lower the K values to match zero. So the next guess is 90 degrees C. And you do similarly get a saturated vapor pressure for benzene at 90 degrees C. And then um, total wind. And you get the K values using this Rel's law. And you get finally F function of psi 0.06638. This time, this value is greater than zero. That means we need to lower, I mean, sorry, uh, increase the K value a little bit. So we increase the K, I mean, the K value. To do that, we increase the temperature. And you just try and error, try and error, and then you finally get 92.4 degrees C. Then the F psi value is negative 0.00163. But there is still a room to improve. If you want to yeah, improve to make 0 0.001 or less, then I would lower the temperature a little bit, like 92.3. Three, right? Um, but I think this is a very close answer to zero. Okay. Um, so here, one thing that I like to emphasize in this example is how to utilize N twenty equation uh, for flash drum calculation. I know many of you are, you know, able to do this, but. Um, I also saw several students who struggle with, um, you know, how to use this N20 equation for this. And some students also um, forget to use different temperature values. But here also I like to emphasize not like A, B, and C. T temperature, you need to use your temperature, all right? The temperature value needs to be also changed depending on the temperature that you are um, using. Okay, so those are the things that I like to emphasize. Um, other than that, I think it's straightforward. Um, so this is a little different method than using the chart. So on Wednesday, we learned how to use the heat priester chart to figure out the K values. Uh, this time we use the Antoine equations to get the saturated vapor pressure to get the K values. So I'll stop here just for a minute and then listen to any questions that you have. Okay, you can put down in the chat as well. No questions. All right, then we'll move on to next question. What are the dew and bubble point temperatures for this feed? All right, so also I'll give you one minute to think about how we can solve this question. What are the dew and bubble point temperature for this feed?
No, thank you so much. Yes. Um, so Vincent, I don't know if you guys like also see this. Can you make this available in OneNote? Of course, um, I can do that. Um, and but did you mean right now? <laughs> I can do that. I'll try to do it right now. If that helps. Here, I'll just try copy. Well, later is fine. Okay. <laughs> um, yes, so I'll do that. Um, and Galvin, thank you so much. This is um, this is correct, right? This is the right approach to um, solve the questions. So bubble point, yes, Z, sigma, sigma Z-I-K-I -I equals one. And the dew point, sigma Z-I over K-I equals one. And we try to find out the K values right to satisfy that equation so that is absolutely correct and i really appreciate it um for yeah i wish i could be writing on it so that you can see it but i don't have the tool unfortunately at home so what i can do is again i'm gonna share what i have uh in notes here so at the bubble point, um, psi value is zero. So this leads to this equation, sigma z i k i equals one. Okay. So again, um, try to get sigma z i equals one at different temperatures. So that is the strategy. So you do the similar pattern again. So at different temperatures, you get saturated vapor pressures, and then using the Rouse law, you get the K values, right? P S over P, and then yeah, you get the sigma Z I K I um, until this becomes one, and then that temperature is eighty nine point three. Okay. Um, yeah, and then here, bubble point T is less than 92.3 because sigma, I'm sorry, not sigma, psi is zero. Yeah, so you can think of the TXY diagram. It is, um, uh, it is, it should be lower than the 92.3 that we just got at 0.5, right? So um, yeah, it will be lower. That is, um, that makes sense, right? Because it's more liquid, right? Liquid majority, it, it's really 100% liquid. The temperature also should be lower than when psi equals 0.5. Um, and at dew point, psi equals one. So F one equals zero. This leads to sigma zi over ki equals one. So here, dew point now may, uh, will be higher than ninety two point three degrees C that we calculated four point five cycles so point five. So you can try initial gas at um, ninety five degrees C, and it is. 1.025. So now you can try the different values to get one. And here it's diff it's opposite to bubble point when you guess because here I'll I'll show you how to set the next guess. Here it's similar. Um oh, we discussed this before, right? So when you get the value greater than one. That means you need to lower the K values. That means you need to drop the temperature for the next guess. Whereas dew point, because K is in the denominator. So when you try to lower the value, that means you need to increase the K value so that you get lower um, ZI over KI value. Um, so yeah, in this case, you increase the temperature to be closer to one. 
So that is opposite, right? So be careful when you make a second guess, right? Always you can come back, but you know, to make a reasonable guess, it's, it's um, useful when you uh, know the mathematics, right? Um, so the answer is, yeah, 89.3 for the bubble point and 95.8 degree C for the dew point. Right. So any other questions? Yeah, could you re-explain like conceptually why for the bubble point, like F of zero equals zero and then for the dew point F of one equals zero? Oh yeah, that, that, yeah. So here zero, that is the value of psi. Mm -hmm. What is psi? Uh, that's like the like percent of vapor. Wait, yeah, right. On right. the vapor or something like that. Yes, that's correct. So the fraction of vaporization, which yeah. is V over F, right? Yeah, with respect to the feed, how much of the feed became vapor, and at the bubble point, it's just the point where you start to see a bubble, meaning it's still liquid, everything is liquid. So vaporization is zero. So V over F is zero. Right, right. I, got, I got Y psi equals zero at bubble point and Y psi equals one at G point, but like, why do we set that equal to zero? I guess is my question. Like the F of zero equals zero. That's the... Flash calculation um, equation. So okay. Right, right. Yeah. This is flash distillation equation. Yeah. Okay. Looking, I just have yeah, to go. Yeah. Right. I got it. Right. Yes. Yes. Thanks. That's a good question. So if you understand the fundamentals like that, then yeah, probably when you see new question, you probably don't get um, confused, right? Um, yeah. So that that that's why. Any other questions? That was a great question. Any other? Um, okay, if not. Yeah, so this one note, I think there is some issue these days. It's not thinking in real time. Oh, it did. Oh, okay, it wasn't. Okay, that's good. Um, so um, yeah, I'll update. And then today, um, we will finish off the chapter four, but we you don't have to worry about the rest of the chapter four because we are going to really focusing on isothermal flash drums, whereas uh, adiabatic flash drum that we're going to learn right now uh, requires energy balance. And actually we are not going to talk about that. Um, I mean, we are not going to focusing on adiabatic flash for the calculation wise. So um, we can just uh, briefly touch on adiabatic flash. Adiabatic flash means um, no heat exchange when this feed goes to the flash drum. And for the energy balance, Although um, we skipped the energy balance when I talked about uh, isothermal flash drum, we can still write down the energy balance equation. So here, HF is the enthalpy that the feed brings in. And also Q also can be from, can be obtained from heater or condenser or valve, whatever. Um, so Q, there is a heat loss or gain equals the enthalpy in both vapor and liquid. So enthalpy B, HB times B plus enthalpy L times L. This is a complete energy balance equation. Um, for isothermal, we keep it as it is. However, for adiabatic, Q 
Q is zero because yeah, heat um, gain or loss is zero for a diabetic flesh. So we just take it out. Then when you reorganize this, um, you just follow it, follow it. Now for a diabetic flesh, we have a function of temperature. This is HB psi plus HL, one minus psi minus HF. So basically, we have a function of temperature of the vapor phase to make this zero, to make this equation zero. So that is another equation using energy balance, but you don't have to worry too much about it, right? So I'll just, uh, just touch on it. Last thing is solid liquid system. So you can basically think of brewing coffee and then separation coffee powder from your coffee. So that's a leaching system. So you contact solid with a solvent that separate, uh, selectively dissolves a mixture. Then you can think of solid coffee powder and solvent water and selectively dissolves, you know, your caffeine, right? Um, your good flavor, whatever, and the mixture, right? Using water. So meaning uh, some materials that's not soluble in water is not going to be in your coffee, right? So that's your leach, that's a leaching system. Crystallization system is um, different. This requires heat loss. Um, so this precipitates solid from solid liquid mixture. And again, this is thermodynamic process. So it's at equilibrium. So you need to know uh, thermodynamic properties like a temperature, pressure to um, induce some sort of crystallization. Okay. Um, so in other words, leaching, is not really considered as um, thermodynamic process because it uh, you can um, it's not like equilibrium, I would say. But crystallization it's set as uh, in distillation. Right? Distillation you have equilibrium between liquid and vapor. Crystallization has equilibrium between solid and liquid. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, for leaching system, almost always involve drying, gravity sedimentation, filtration, centrifugation. So that's why it's not a um, precise separation because it involves different steps to get the final product. Uh, it's, it's a little different from liquid vapor separation. Liquid vapor separation, you don't need drying, gravity set, sedimentation, filtration, or centrifugation, right? But these actually add up um, unpredictable, um, uh, not accurate results. It, it gives you some results, but it's not always the same. So, um, and also, crystallization TXI diagram looks like this. And this is actually, uh, this varies um, much depending on the system. Uh, whereas um, PXY diagram for L LD system, VLE system, vapor liquid equilibrium system, you always get this type of PXY diagram except the azeotropic system. However, crystallization, you get very different um, uh, lines, um, yeah, it can be very different. So that's why uh, it's not as fundamental as the liquid vapor equilibrium. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to touch on the crystallization where it can also have phase diagram that shows you different phases. For example, um, E, that's the mixture solid um, and solid, um, what is this? C10H8. Uh, this is naphthalene. Okay, naphthalene. Um, whereas this one in this small triangle area, 
that's the solid of benzene and the mixture in liquid. And uh, whereas here, big triangle tells you um, it's a solid naphthalene and solution of the two. And the here above area, that's a homogeneous solution of the two, naphthalene and benzene. Right. So you can also tell the amount of benzene versus naphthalene um, using inverse lever and rule. Um, so the, the technique fundamental is similar to what we've learned. For example, GH over HI, that is the amount of naphthalene over the total solution. So that's a fraction of crystallization of naphthalene. Yeah, but I, I don't want to go into the details for the crystallization. Um, if you're interested, uh, we can come back when we have more time and then we'll solve this question. But I rather focus on the DLE system, vapor liquid equilibrium system using um, distillation. So in chapter four, we will focus on isothermal flash calculation, meaning just one single drum, okay, single stage. And then now, um, from now on, in chapter seven, you're gonna learn multi stages, okay, for more efficient separations. Um, but yeah, so that is about chapter four. So I like to conclude chapter four like this, unless you have further questions. Actually, we have still time, like five minutes. And um, yeah, so feel free to use that time if you have any questions. Okay, so if not, then we can finish up uh, today's uh, class a little bit earlier and have a great uh, weekend and I hope to see you in person next Monday. Thanks, have a nice one. Yeah, thank you. Hey, Dr. Park. Yeah. So on the homework, part G of question 4.6, mm -hmm. uh, it's asking us to use Routes law and Dalton's like law or equation to solve. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, we we have to use that, but eventually I believe that we have to use the Anton's equation to get the correct values to plot on the graph. But the range for I forgot what uh what the chemical was goes down to like negative 2.6 degrees celsius and i couldn't find the constants like a b or c in that temperature range of negative 2.6 to like 80 degrees celsius so i was just kind of wondering how we go about solving that question with just dalton's law and Routes law oh i see what you're saying which which um specific question are you talking about by the way uh 4.6 part g on the homework oh, okay. All right. Mm. Mm -mm. Hmm. It's not so that doesn't cover the range that you're interested in. Yeah, so I tried Googling it. Um yeah. and I I couldn't find the temperature range at which those constants are valid. Mm. Well, which temperature range are you interested in? The benzene temperature range, the negative 2.6 to 80. 
Oh, but you're saying it has to be above? Like, when I was Googling it to solve the question, like, they said that it was between, like, I don't know, like, 20 degrees Celsius to, like, 135. Uh -huh. uh, and nothing below that. So, oh. we, like, we couldn't consider the, the values below 20 degrees Celsius. By the way, why do you need the temperature? We need the temperature because we used the Dalton's and Routes law to solve for, you know, our X's and Y's. But then we also need to plug in that temperature into the Antoine's equation to get mm -hmm. other values to but plot. If that's what you need, um, you, you can look up this one, table B4, Antoine equation for benzene that has a range between 14.5 to 80.9. Yeah, but our graph is not gonna be accurate because that temperature range doesn't go down to negative 2.6 degrees Celsius. Oh, so like, you're looking like for Like if you lower. look at the homework, yeah. If, if you look at the homework, uh -huh. like the, the range is far, like below what range uh, you just had up, see? Oh. oh, that's true. Um, um, let's see. That's a good question. Mm. Like, I, I mean, based yeah. off our lectures and stuff. I would assume that since we're using routes and Dalton's laws, we're going to be looking at the K values um, from our calculations. And based on previous homeworks and what we've discussed in class, I would assume that uh -huh. um, K values are only like in use if you have a very, very small temperature range compared to a large temperature range like that. Uh, uh -huh. It's just inaccurate. But I mean, I can't make a graph and prove that to you because I, I don't know how to. Like, mm. there's, no, there's no range. Yeah, also, I don't know about the other 14 people still here, but I think a handful of us had the same question. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Um, let me think about how we can... I mean, the homework is due at midnight. Like, can we mm -hmm. just submit it without part G? Like, we did everything else but part G. Or write the mm -hmm. conclusion, but then, like, just say what I just said to you. Like, the K values are only in play when it's a very small temperature range, and that's that. Or unless you have another solution. Or if you want to look at my, it over the... My, if you look yeah. At it, then... yeah, sorry. My question is... Why do you need to cover that low temperature range to compare the, okay, so here, the question, again, is asking you to compare, All right, let me share the screen again here. Yeah, it's asking you to compare with this experimental data, but data temperature range, uh, range from 67.7 to 80.1. I guess you can compare only these range, not, not the whole area, whole range, maybe here. Okay, so then I guess, yeah. I mean, if I wanna use Antoine's equation for the benzene, right. like I can start at 26.1. I think so, yeah, the pressure yeah. And then go, so, yes. okay. All right, then I'll, uh, yeah. I'll do this. Yeah, did I answer your question? Yeah, I'll just, yeah. I'll just disregard right. the other values. Great, yeah, that's a good question. Any other questions? All right, it was good to talk to you. And yeah, see you next week, then. Have a good weekend.